Welcome, I'm Kelly Wayman for Silhouette, and in this class you'll learn all about the print and cut feature for your Silhouette machine. Print and cut is one of the most basic but versatile features of any Silhouette cutting machine. Print and cut allows you to print an image from the Silhouette Studio software on your home printer, then have your Silhouette machine cut precisely around that printed image. In this class, I'll show you some examples of printable media you can cut with your machine, what elements you need on your document for the print and cut process to happen successfully, and how to open or create those designs to prepare them for print and cut. We'll go through a few projects so you can see how easy and fun this can be. Here are the tools you need to create a print and cut. You'll need a Silhouette Cameo, Portrait, or Curio. All of these machines are capable of print and cut. You'll also need a printer. Most Silhouette printable media uses an inkjet printer. You also need printable media. That can be paper or one of the many other kinds of printable media available from Silhouette. This includes things like a wide variety of sticker paper, printable adhesive cardstock, printable vinyl, printable heat transfer, temporary tattoo paper, printable magnet paper, printable cotton fabric, or shrink plastic. You'll also find a spatula tool helpful to help you remove your cutouts from the mat. I'm using Silhouette Studio version 4.2, and most of the features I'll use work in the standard edition. Now that you know what you need, let's get started with some print and cut designs. The easiest print and cut project is one that's already designated as a print and cut design in the Silhouette Design Store, so that's where we'll start. We'll open the Store tab in Silhouette Studio, and that opens a new browser for you in version 4.2 and higher. So let's say we want to make a printable birthday design. So we'll go to Designs and Celebrations and just click on Birthday. And you could actually type birthday in the search field also. Once you have results, we can add a filter. So we'll just check the box for print and cut. And now we're looking at only print and cut designs in the design store. Now you'll notice that these icons show a print and cut label. So as you're browsing in the design store, you can know that it's a print and cut design. Also, if you click on a design and look in the details, it'll say design type, print and cut. Now, if you want to make a print and cut design, but it's not already a print, a print and cut design, that's all right, because I'll show you how to do that later. Let's also look in our library, so you can see that you can also filter for print and cut in your library. So I'm gonna go to my flowers folder and I have a lot of designs in here, but I only wanna see print and cut designs for flowers. So I'm gonna to go to file types and I'll uncheck select all. And then if I just check the box for print and cut, now everything I see is going to be a print and cut design from the designs I already have in my library. Now let's open one and I'll show you how easy th this is to work with a print and cut design. Remember that you also need to check your file types again if you want to look for something else later. You want to turn those all back on. Now I've marked a certain file that I want to use as a favorite by marking it with a star. So now I can just go to my favorites folder and I'm going to open this cute watercolor flower bouquet. Now as we look at this design as, a, as an example, I'm gonna talk about the four basic elements you need for every print and cut design to work. First, you need to make sure that your page size in Silhouette Studio, your document here, matches the media size you're gonna run through your printer. So all of the Silhouette printable media I use is letter size. So we're gonna set that up in the page setup panel. We'll just set it to letter. And let's go ahead and shrink this design. Just so it fits better on the page. All right, so we have our page size set up. 
Now, our design also needs color uh, when you're doing a print and cut. And even if that's only black, you need color for something to print. This design already has color, so we're good. The third thing you need is cut lines, so your machine knows where to cut. You can see on this design, it has a red cut line. Now default cut lines, in case you were wondering, do not print. So if they are set to 0.0, make sure I select that, if they're set to 0.0, they do not print. And you can see that line thickness up here in the quick access toolbar, or you can go over to the line style panel and that will show you the thickness of the line here. So this red line is visible only in the software and it won't print unless we choose to thicken that line, or we can check this box here for print lines of selected shapes. Now, when you choose a print and cut design from the design store, it automatically ensures that you have color and cut lines, which is what makes them a nice choice for working with print and cut. Finally, the fourth thing you need is registration marks, registration marks turned on. So I'm going to just hit my letter M on my keyboard. That's a hot key for turning on your registration marks. And we will talk more about registration marks in a minute. But first, we're going to move on to another example to show you that. All right, so let's open a new document. And back in my library, I have a file in my library that's not designated as a print and cut design. And remember, if you haven't turned on your filters again, go ahead and do that so you can see other than print and cut designs. So I'm going to open this shadow box card from my favorites folder. And you can see that it has some pieces that can be cut from colored paper, but it also has some multicolored pieces that are definitely meant to be printed. So I'll ungroup this and I'll move these colored pieces off to the side and I can cut those from cardstock or pattern paper. So we're left with these designs to be print and cut. Let me move those a little closer together. So let's remember the four elements. We need our paper size to match the media we'll be printing on and that is correct, it's letter size. These designs have color so we're good there and they do have cut lines let me zoom into that, you can see that they have cut lines. So that's good. What we need now is registration marks. So let's talk more about registration marks, a little more in depth. So you can turn on registration marks in the third tab of the page setup panel, or as I mentioned before, you can use your hotkey letter M. But in this registration marks tab, there are a few choices for you. There's off, type 1 and type 2. Most of you are going to need type 1, which is for any model of Cameo, Portrait, or Curio. Type 2 is for the oldest models of Silhouette machines before the Cameo and Portrait came on the scene. So let's choose type 1. Now you can see, now we have a black square in the corner and two corner lines in these other corners. These marks are going to print so your machine can use its optical eye to read those marks on the printout. The marks tell the machine where the cut lines are in relation to these marks so you can compensate for things like differences in how you load the media and mat each time. Now this crosshatch area is an area where you need to avoid placing your designs. As your machine moves to read these registration marks, there shouldn't be anything in this crosshatch area to confuse the optical eye. And this crosshatch is only going to show in the software. It doesn't print like the marks do print. Finally, we can see this red cut border. If you don't see this red cut border, you need to go to your first tab of the page setup panel and check the box for show cut border. Your machine will not cut outside this border, so you need to keep your designs inside the border and out of the crosshatch area. So let's position these pieces inside the red border. 
while avoiding the crosshatch area. All right, back to the registration mark tab. You've got some options here. Uh, you can adjust the length and thickness of your registration marks and also the orientation and the inset. If we go to the advanced tab, you can manually adjust the insets to conserve your paper or to fit your designs better on the page. So I'm gonna change my right inset to 3.5. And I'm gonna change my bottom inset to 7.5. So I've got a lot smaller area to work with. All I need to do is rearrange these to fit in here. Remember, I'm just trying to keep out of the crosshatch area and also keep my design within this red cut border. Now, keep in mind that when you change the length or thickness of your registration marks, there's a chance that it could um, make your cuts slightly less accurate. So if your cuts are off or they're not reading, go ahead and just click Restore Defaults and reposition your designs to fit within those registration marks and crosshatch areas, and that should um, usually fix your problem. All right, so let's go to the Send panel. This is where we can check that our cut lines and settings are the way we need them. So here we can see a preview of these cut lines and they look good. I'll zoom in a little bit. These bold red lines are where the machine's going to cut. And we are just gonna print this on white cardstock. We can print it directly from the Send tab or we can print from the Design tab. You can just go to File Print or you can use the little printer icon. So we'll select our printer, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Preferences to verify that my printer is set up the way I want. And your little printer dialog box might look different depending on what printer you have. So I look at paper size to make sure that it's set up up the same as I have in my Silhouette Studio document. And this one is correct. It's at letter size and it's at portrait orientation. Now you might choose to adjust your print quality to a higher quality, or you might want to set it to print from your rear tray if you have that option on your printer. And you just choose what works best for your printer and your material that you're using. You might also choose to look at a print preview uh, before you print just to see what things look like, but we're actually okay on this one. So let's go ahead and accept any changes and we are ready to print. So when I click print, my document is gonna go to my selected printer and you just need to make sure that once you print a document for print and cut, that you do not move or alter your design in Silhouette Studio once that's printed. In the Send tab, I'm gonna check and make sure that my material is set the way I want. I'm gonna be using just a regular card stock, and so pattern paper is my favorite setting for that. And my action is on cut, and I'm gonna use my auto blade in this Cameo 3. Once that's printed, I'm going to load the printout on the mat exactly as I see it here. So I'm gonna watch and make sure that that little registration mark square goes in the upper left corner, just as you see on the virtual mat. All right, so let's go ahead and put that on the mat. And you'll notice that those red cut lines did not print, and that's exactly what we expected because they're set at the default 0.0. .0. Now, because we have registration marks turned on in the document, the machine is going to read those registration marks before cutting. And once that's successful, it moves immediately into cutting the design.
So now I have my print and cut pieces and I've also got my cutouts that I cut from solid colored cardstock and some pattern paper. And so now I'll just assemble these together for my card. Just remove these from the mat. Okay, so I will go ahead and start folding these card pieces on their perforations. And glue on the pieces where they belong. Any type of adhesive or glue works for this. I like to glue as much down as possible while it's flat. my clouds with some foam adhesive. and just keep adding these layers. my example. finish inserting these inside the card. This card will all be able to fold flat when we're finished.
So that adds, those printable elements add a lot to uh, a card that's otherwise just solid pieces of, of um, different colors. So the watercolor flower and this printable card pieces were examples of designs that are already in this design store as print and cut files. All the elements are there to open the design, print it, and cut it. Now what if you have a file in your library that you'd like to print, but it's only a cut file in many pieces across your page? I'll show you how to convert a cut file to a print and cut design next. In this lesson, I'll show you how to convert cut files into print and cut designs. You might be wondering why you would want to choose a print and cut instead of performing a regular cut. Let's look at this bunny. As I'll show you in a minute, this design comes in several uncolored pieces when you open it in Silhouette Studio. If you cut it from various colors of paper, it requires assembly by gluing all those pieces together. That's great if you like paper piecing and if you've got the right colors of paper to use. But if you don't like spending the time with a lot of assembly, especially if you want to make multiples of this little guy, then print and cut may be a better option for you. You can also choose patterns or custom colors in the software to get just the right look. You might also want to make him really small. That's easy when it's a printable, colored-filled image on your page, but difficult to cut and piece together the smaller it gets. With a cut file, it's personal preference whether you cut it in layers from various materials or if you choose to convert it into a print and cut file. I'll show you how to do that now so you have the option to use it either way. All right, so in my library, I'm going to find this design for the bunny sunglasses. Double click to open. I'll go ahead and ungroup this. Now you can see how this file is a bunch of uncolored pieces on the page. It's like this, we can cut it from various layers of colored paper and then assemble it. And that's fun, but let me use this as an example so you know how to turn any design like this into a print and cut design. Let's open the fill panel to color our different pieces. And every design is different, so just you might just need to group and ungroup depending on what design you're working with. Group and ungroup as you go. So let's go ahead and change the body to a tan color. Now notice that the mouth and nose acts like a cut, a cut out on this piece. That means it's a compound path. We're just gonna leave that alone for now. And we can hold our shift key while clicking on the ear pieces and the mouth and nose. That means when I'm holding the shift key, it means I can select all those at the same time. And I'll go ahead and change those to pink. The sunglasses on the inside pieces, we're gonna change that to a gradient gray. So I'll go to my gradient tab change it gray, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the angle on that just a little bit, just because I can. And the frames, I want to use a pattern fill. So I'll use my pattern section of the fill panel. All right, so I'm looking for a pattern that is underwater fish. And if you have a hard time seeing these on the fill panel, you can actually go ahead and pop out your library with a split screen. And you can look at your patterns a little bit bigger this way. All right, so I've got that. I'll shrink my little split screen again. All right, and so I have these all filled with color, and now I'm gonna change my line color to make it invisible. Now, these line thicknesses, as we talked about before, they are 0.0, .0 thickness, and they don't print, but I find it sometimes distracting when I'm working with colored pieces, and so I've just removed the color just to remove the distraction. Now I'll go ahead and drag everything into position. and get this bunny all 
lined up where it needs to be. I'll go ahead and zoom in. And you can use your arrow keys to nudge those pieces in just tiny little increments. Okay, so let's go ahead, uh, and if your design by any chance has pieces that uh, disappear behind other layers, go ahead and just use your send to front and send backwards uh, up here in your quick access panel, quick access toolbar. So I'll group this, and I want it to be four inches wide. Again, I'll use that in my scale choices on the quick access toolbar to quickly change that. And I'm going to make one copy of this. I'll hold my Alt key or Option on a Mac and just click and drag one copy off to the side. I want to set my page orientation to landscape orientation. All right, so are we ready to print and cut? Check the page size, that's letter, so that's good. Turn our registration marks on. It does have cut lines, and you know this has cut lines by default because this started out as a cut file. But let's go ahead and see where those cut lines are in the send panel. So all of these pieces that are close together, that are layered on top of each other, it still plans to cut everything. So I'm going to choose Cut Edge. And that's just going to cut the outer edge of everything that's overlapped. Now most of the time this works, so no inner shapes are going to cut. But with this design, remember that hole we had for the mouth and nose? That hole still wants to cut because cut edge only cuts the outer edge of overlapping areas. So we obviously have a little bit that doesn't overlap perfectly. So we can fix this a few ways. Let's go back to the design tab. And on this first bunny, one way is to add an offset. So let's open the offset panel. And I'm going to click Offset and change that to 0 0.075 and click Apply. That creates a full background layer, so those holes there that showed before will no longer cut through. When we go to the Send panel, we'll see that. The second option is to make the mouth and nose piece a separate piece and then color it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this. I'll ungroup that. And I'm going to delete the mouth and the nose piece. Now I'll take this bunny and I'm going to release the compound path. So I'm going to get rid of that hole and change it into its own layer. So I'll right click choose Release Compound Path. You can see that hole disappeared, and I will add a line color. So you can see it's still there, it's just the same color. So I'll choose that, and I'll recolor it pink. I'm going to use the same color, so I want to use my eyedropper tool, and go ahead and remove the line color again. And so now it's its own layer. I'll go ahead and group that again. Okay, so back to the Send panel. And those are still both set to Cut Edge. And you can see that one's got the offset that got rid of that hole in the background. And then this one changed it to all separate layers. And so there's, it's only going to cut around the outside edge and we could now print either choice. I'm going to go ahead and choose my offset version. Oops. 
undo, I'll group that together. And I'm going to make four of him. So again, use my Alt key to click and drag sections away. And he's all the way within my cut border and out of the crosshatch area. So that's good. And we are ready to print this. So I'm going to open my printer icon, check my preferences. That's the letter size and landscape. And I do want to print from my rear tray. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to click OK and go ahead and print that. So I'll just load that on my mat. And I can load it into the machine and then I'll just make sure that my settings are correct. So now we have these printouts and I went through the effort once to recolor it in the software and now I have it so I can print and cut as many of these as I want. We'll just take one of these and add some foam adhesive to the back. And I can stick it on a little gift bag. So that's just one example of changing a cut file into a print and cut. We had to fill those colors ourselves. And sometimes those pieces are already colored for you, as I'll show you in the next example. You can use the same process of turning a cut file into a print and cut design where you're creating all or most of the elements yourself from scratch. Shapes and text created in Silhouette Studio are cut files by default, but text lends itself especially well to print and cut. Let's convert another cut file into a print and cut, and we'll combine it with some other shapes and text to create an invitation. All right, so I've got a new document open, and I'm going to open this alien file from my library. Now this file is already in color, which is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this and rearrange the pieces to get those layers where they belong. Remember, you can use your keyboard arrow keys and group and ungroup with whatever helps you move everything correctly. And again, I'll turn off my line color for these just because I like to look at it better without those line colors in there. Just keep arranging until everything looks the way it should. Those I have where I want, I'll group them. All right, now just because these have colors in them does not mean that you have to use the colors that are here. So you can actually change the colors if you want. So I'm going to change this blue to a red 
and the glass piece I could even change to a gradient again. And just adjust it however I want. Okay, so I actually have this one finished and recolored the way I want. So I'll open that. Now, if you want, you can use shapes and text tools in Silhouette Studio to add to your print and cut. And those are cut files by default. And we could just simply use a circle shape tool. Hold my shift key to get a perfect circle as I'm drawing. And we could leave this exactly as it is right now and just ha have a round sticker. But let's go ahead and step it up with text and another design to turn this into an invitation. I'll delete that circle. And I'm going to reset that to full page size and open this three invitation card kit. You can use whatever pieces you want. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup that. And I just want to use the middle section, those pieces. So I'll delete these extra ones. And this background piece, this larger piece, and the uh, pocket envelope, I'll go ahead and cut from a red cardstock that's not print and cut. But now let's go ahead and finish off this design as a print and cut invitation. So we want our page size to be letter. And this one I want to set to landscape. Uh, I do have registration marks turned on on this one. So I do know my cut area here. And let's go ahead and grab our text tool here on the left. Click down to create a cursor. And we'll type the invitation information. Okay, so I want my, got my text there. I'm going to change it to black. And I just changed my line color to invisible. And now I'm gonna go ahead and change the text on that. Uh, the spacing and the font and everything. So double click for point editing mode. And that first line I want to be the font called Beachy. And you can change this in the text style panel over here, or you can use the quick access toolbar. So that first line is Beachy at 72 point. And the rest of it, I want to be LD stock. And that I want to be 25 point. And I'll change that all to center justification. My alien I want to be about 2.25 inches wide. Okay, and now let's get that spread apart a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup that so I can make those lines separate. Group the first line, group the second section, and now I can bring them over to my invitation and center that the way I want with my little alien guy. select all of those and use my quick access toolbar align tools to get that all centered. All right, and now I want a background color. So again, I can use my pattern fill. 
And I know the pattern I want since I have so many here. Oh, and let's go ahead and send that to the back so it doesn't cover up anything. It might be hard to find the pattern I want. So again, I'm gonna go to the split screen in my library and I want the sketch circles and I will shrink my library back down. All right, now this text, I'll hold my shift key to select both of those at the same time. I want the same red for my text as I have here on the legs of the spaceship. So I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool and just click that red to change that text quickly to how I want it. I'm gonna group all of this make one copy to the side, hold my Alt or Option key and just drag one off to the side. And I'm gonna use Print Bleed on this. So I'm gonna make sure that these are spaced a little further apart. And Print, ble pr print Bleed was a feature that was introduced with Silhouette Studio version 4.2. You can find that in your Page Setup panel, the first tab, and just check the box for print bleed, and I always leave the bleed radius at its default. Now you won't see the print bleed until you look at a print preview or actually print it when you're working with this version of Silhouette Studio. And you should be aware that print bleed affects everything on your page and that the background color between your design and its cut line matters. Now you should be aware that print bleed affects everything on your page and that the background color between your design and its cut line matters. If you want print bleed to work, your color design has to have a clear background. So let's look at this other document and I've got a print preview of it as a PDF that I'll show you. But as you can see here, this circle is clear. It's not filled with anything. So it's a clear background around my colored design. And this over here, I filled the circle with white, so it's got a white background. And then of course, this one again, it has no outer circle, so it's considered a clear background. Now if we look at the same document with print bleed on, you can see that the one with the clear background, these two with the clear background, that's where you've got your print bleed that you can see it and so it has extended that color a little bit beyond its natural border. And the one with the white background has all these crisp, clean edges. And so that's the difference when you have a clear background and a white background when you have print bleed on. Uh, if you want the white border and you don't want this color to bleed, you need to make sure that you either fill the background with white or just turn off print bleed. Okay, let's go back into our studio document with the alien invitation. And let's just check the elements we need for print and cut. We've got our page size set correctly. We have registration marks turned on. Our design has color. And now we just need to go to the send panel to adjust the cut lines. We don't want these letters and the design to cut individually. So it's important that whenever we're adding text that we go to the send panel and select it all. And we're just gonna click cut edge. That makes sure that all of those overlapping pieces that we just want to print stay inside and it'll only cut the outer edge. All right, and the material we're gonna be using is printable adhesive cardstock. So that's under cardstock, printable adhesive backed. And we'll leave our action for cut and our tool on auto blade. Now this time when I print, we'll go to preferences. And in this case, since I have print bleed turned on, I'm gonna check my print preview before printing. And I like to do that whenever I have print bleed enabled so I can see how it's going to look. Everything else looks good. And so we're gonna go ahead and print that and look at the printout. All 
Okay, so here's our print preview, and it might be a little hard to see, but that pattern has been extended just a little bit around the outer edges. Uh, but uh, maybe more importantly, we can see right here that the colors are not going to bleed into each other. Nothing is going to run into its, uh, each other on the page. So this looks good, and we can go ahead and print that on adhesive cardstock and load it and send it when we're ready. So there's just a little bit of an extension on that printout because we had the print bleed activated. We'll go ahead and just load it. Now that it's finished cutting, you can see how print bleed works. Let's take this off of the mat. And you can see that this has left a little bit of border around the edge of the colored section and it's extended it so there's less chance of getting any white edges when it cuts. And now this adhesive back cardstock is really easy because it's sticky all the way on the back. It's really easy to apply to your invitation. So that can just slide in there, the other pieces we cut from that invitation section. Now you know how to turn cut files and text into print and cut designs and how to use print bleed to eliminate white edges when it cuts. Next, we'll talk about assigning cut lines to images that have no prior cut lines. We've talked about using pre-made print and cut designs and also how to convert regular cut designs into print and cut designs. Now we're going to talk about turning images that have no cut lines into print and cut designs. That involves the trace feature of Silhouette Studio. All right, so I have open a colored image on a white background, and I want to add text to this and cut it out to turn it into a temporary tattoo. This is a ping image that didn't come from the design store, and it wasn't created in Silhouette Studio, so it has no cut lines. Generally, that's how images, image files like clip art, drawings, and photos come. If we go into the send panel, you can see that it doesn't matter which choice I make, whether it's cut or cut edge, the outline itself, the image itself, doesn't get a cut line by clicking those choices. So we need to assign cut lines by tracing. We'll go back into the design tab, and I'm gonna make two copies of this so we can see how these different options for tracing work. Again, I've just used my Alt key while I click and drag a copy off to the side. Now I'm going to open the Trace panel. Click Select Trace Area, then just drag a box around the image you want to trace, and increase the threshold until the image fills with yellow. Now on this one, as long as I've got a clean outer edge, I'm okay to use Trace and Detach. So I'll go ahead and do that now click Trace and Detach, and you can see I can drag the sun away and the background has become separate and it can be deleted. Now I'm not going to go into a full tracing lesson, but let's look at this first sunshine. We'll do the same thing, select a trace area, and then this time after we've increased the threshold, we're going to click trace. And that adds holes to the cut line where it's not filled with yellow. Okay, and then this last sunshine, we're going to select a trace area, increase the threshold, and this time 
we will just choose Trace Outer Edge. And what that does is it ignores the white, the white part in the middle and just leaves a trace line around the outer edge, uh, which is now a cut line. All right, now Trace and Trace Outer Edge create visible cut lines. And let's go ahead and group those cut lines with the image. So if I move it, I don't move the image away from its cut line now. And let's move those aside for now. Now all three of these trace options do create cut lines. And as you know by now, that's a key requirement of print and cut. Now depending on the software version you have, just note that trace and detach may or may not automatically turn on the cut lines. So if you go to the send panel after using trace and detach, and the cut lines have not automatically turned on, all you have to do is select the object and choose cut or cut edge. All right, back to the design tab. I'm gonna resize this sunshine to about 1.45 inches high. And I'm going to, I, I want to print and cut an entire page onto temporary tattoo paper for my kids' friends and their classmates. But first I want to add some text. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'll click on my text tool here on the left. And just type. Hey sunshine. All right, and then I want to I need to turn off my crosshairs that just turned on. I must have hit a hotkey. All right, so I want to change my text to Aunt Jana font. And I want it to be 12 point. and center justified. I'm gonna fill that with black and turn off the red line color. And then I can just position that the way I want to. I'll use my align center and just nudge it up so it looks good. Okay, now that I have my text in there, I'm going to go ahead and group that with the sunshine. Now, I'm gonna go back to the full page and before I make a bunch of copies of this, I'm going to set my page orientation. It's still letter size, which is good. I want it portrait orientation. I wanna turn on my registration marks, so I'll just hit my letter M And let's check our cut lines in the send panel. Now you should note that some designs behave differently behave, be, depending on how they were created. So um, when you're tracing, you just need to be careful and be able to adjust based on how these are created. So I'm gonna zoom in. And just as we've done before, I'll select this whole design and I'm gonna choose cut edge. And now it's only going to cut the outer edge. This is why I chose trace and detach, so I could eliminate any background. So if we take these other designs that we used earlier, that we traced earlier, this is the one where we chose trace. If I choose, set that one to cut edge, it's going to try and cut that background. Same thing if we bring over the one that was set as trace and detach. If we were to set it to cut or cut edge at this point, it would try and use that background. And we don't want that. When I chose trace and detach, I got rid of that background. If you do need to uh, access just those cut lines, you just need to work with ungrouping and selecting exactly the part you want. But for now, I'm gonna work with the one where I chose trace and detach.
All right, so go back to the design tab. And with this one, I want to fill the page. So I'm gonna go with the replicate panel and just click fill page. And that fills my page really quickly. Uh, it's a convenient way to make a lot of copies. Now, when I'm gonna do this on temporary tattoo paper. And so I need to mirror this image. So the text comes out the way I expect it to. So I'm just going to select all of those, right click and choose flip horizontally. Now I could use print bleed, but I'm gonna go ahead and not have print bleed active on this one. That's personal preference. And then this one is ready to print onto white temporary tattoo paper. And as I get that set up, I wanna make sure that the page size is right. I'm gonna use my rear tray. And when I load that paper, I need to make sure that it's going to print on the glossy side of the tattoo paper. So this is ready. I'll go ahead and get that printed. Now I've got this printout, but because we're using temporary tattoo paper, it actually needs an extra step done before I print on it. So this temporary tattoo paper has a, an extra film that goes on the top. It's just got a narrow strip at the top that can be taken off. And then you can line it up with your printout and that top section will stick down to your tattoo paper. That lines it up and then you can just peel away the bottom section of the backing and just slide that on. Just use your scraper tool to slide it as you remove that backing. Okay, so once that film is on, now we can go ahead and load it onto our mat and into our Kami Auto Kedit. So we have our tattoo cut out. We'll go ahead and peel off the clear film on top and then just apply it to skin. And you could use white sticker paper if you didn't want to use tattoo paper. Now you know how to create cut lines from image files by tracing. Before we wrap up, I want to go over a few troubleshooting tips for print and cut. If your cuts are off from where they show in the send panel, check your paper size and your cutting mat selection first. Make sure you've got the right type of mark selected, which for most users will be type one. Make sure nothing on your printed page lies within the crosshatch areas. For a registration failed message, try a manual registration. This process and more helpful troubleshooting tips are in our YouTube version 4.1 how-to video called Print and Cut Troubleshooting. 
You can also reach out to the Silhouette support team if you need further help troubleshooting. I hope you've learned a lot about Print and Cut in this class, so you can use pre-made Print and Cut designs, convert shapes, text, and other designs into custom Print and Cut projects, and how to trace images to convert them into Print and Cut designs. This really is a great feature, and you can use these techniques to create unique projects with our wide variety of printable materials. You'll find more uses and inspiration for Print and Cut as you visit the Silhouette 101 blog at silhouette101.com. As always, please reach out to Silhouette Support at silhouetteamerica.com if you need further help. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy creating your projects in more color with Print and Cut.